All right, hello and welcome. Just trying all of this stuff out. I am still struggling with the interwebs, but I hopefully am making it work. I'm actually hotspotting off of my phone um, to, to sub in where my Wi-Fi on my laptop isn't working. So I think we've got everything up and running. Let me just hit the other go live button I've got to hit. And just checking to make sure that it's all working. Thanks for your patience. Just loving that, trying to make it all work. Easy peasy, delightful. All right, I'll try to keep an eye on it as I'm moving through um, so that we can, sorry, um, do some yoga together. And so welcome to our flow-ish class. Callie is ready. This is my dog, if you haven't met her yet. Uh, she is loving doing these yoga videos with me. She usually just sits right off camera. And so let's start and settle in. If you've got furniture to move out of the way, if you've been waiting and you're ready and to go, um, let's start to just start to make our way onto our mat, not just physically, but also um, mentally and starting to prepare for some movement in our practice. The one thing I really love about yoga is that it's not just about trying to get so many reps in. It's not so much about the, the exercise, although that is a big main part of it. It's about things like the breath and becoming aware of the breath or becoming aware of the movement and starting to build in some of that awareness right into our practice. And so as we learn to practice that, then we can start to correct our own posture. Like you can become aware of your arms or how you feel or you feel that tightness or how you can move within that and then you can start to become aware of how to maybe resolve some of that. Um, so whether you need to stretch a little deeper or go a little bit easier, um, all of that starts to come into our practice. And the best part is, is when that starts to ooze off of our mat, um, when it becomes more into uh, maybe you're standing doing dishes for a long period of time and you kind of are feeling that hunching motion being aware of feeling that tightness and then correcting, or on the even deeper level of letting it become almost a little bit more of a mental practice. How are you feeling mentally? Can you work within that and move on um, from that or become aware of maybe when you start to get stressed opposed to when you're reacting to stress. Anyways, yoga is really cool for that whole interoception and becoming aware of the body and of movement and how we're feeling. Um, and that interoception has been proven to help in so many different ways, especially high stress, anxiety, um, depression, all of those things that I think a lot of us are feeling the peak of um, in these times. So let's get into it and get moving. Um, I want to start laying down today. That's usually how I would start if we were in an actual studio. And there's something really nice about that. I've done a lot of seated. Uh, meditations but let's roll on back if you would rather be seated by all means I will not stop you from that but our first little sequence it will be also on our back so um, settling down into your mat roll back and down and start to feel the spine connecting in with the mat the floor whatever is underneath you just feel that feedback feel that rebound if that low back is really tight, um, you might need to have your knees bent. If you want a little bit more, you can start to stretch them out. You might be aware of the little curve um, through the spine as you have your legs extended. And then just maybe take like a good little morning stretch, reaching arms up overhead, and then bring the arms alongside the body um, to rest down and settle in a little bit deeper and so scanning through the body here what is feeling open what feels tight roll those shoulders back and down and see if that helps relieve um, any tightness along those shoulders have a slight tuck of the chin extend long through the crown of the head and become aware of the hips are you holding tension can you feel your body squeezing in anywhere Maybe take a nice deep breath in, fill the lungs, and let it out with a big sigh. 
Mm, did that help release any of that tension? Mm, maybe taking a couple more, start to become aware of that breath and of that movement. And so breathing in, filling the lungs, becoming nice and aware. And exhaling, being complete, emptying the lungs, moving through that. Take a couple more nice deep breaths. My Facebook page says waiting for video and my video streaming software says everything is fine. So I'm just gonna keep going I'll post the video afterwards as well in case there's any cutouts or glitches. Might just be my screen. All right, so as we're settling in, taking a couple of more breaths, maybe you want to set an intention um, for this evening. What's brought you to your mat? What are you hoping to get out of this? <sighs> Maybe you have a word of affirmation or a mantra you're working with. Maybe an I am statement. I am strong. I am fearless. I am courageous. I'm starting to think of those words you want to start to manifest in your life and in your practice. All right, let's wake the body up and start to wiggle into fingers and toes. Maybe roll wrists and ankles. Now let's take that nice, good morning stretch. So reach those arms up overhead, point through the toes if the legs are extended. Really feel that arch through the spine, feel everything getting nice and stretchy. You're starting to lengthen. Head is still ever so slightly tucked. You're getting so much length through the spine. And exhale, just drop the arms down. <sighs> Soften, relax, release. Let's take one more of those, inhale, reach up, point through the toes, and this time start to squeeze through the body, tightening and making tension in the muscles, maybe even come to fists, you curl through the toes, you activate through the glutes and the shoulders, getting into those nice major muscles, squeezing, squeezing, and then take a big exhale, side out. Ah, release, let go. And hug those knees in towards the chest, and bringing them in. Maybe take a nice little rock, along that low back feeling how now the vertebrae is really starting to press into the mat so even lying here become aware of each one of your vertebrae all of your spine and see if you can really start to press it down in towards the mat so it's not really a visible movement it's something just more intentional but you can really start to feel it as you press um, through the neck you feel that nice lengthening through the shoulders and then through that low back. And try to keep the spine completely connected just like you are here throughout the entirety of this next sequence. And so getting ready for ah, just a little bit of a warm up here. So let's send the feet up towards the ceiling. If you want, you can hold on to the backs of the legs getting into those hamstrings. Ooh, my hammies are extra tight this evening. So if you need to have a gentle bend to the knees, I'm not expecting straight feet here um, or straight legs here. I'm just expecting you to start to push the feet up towards the ceiling and to relax through the shoulders. Keep pressing into that spine, pull the belly button in towards the chest to keep that low back nice and engaged. So if you need to just simply hang out here with the hands on the legs, um, that is totally an option, especially if you just want to work on maybe extending one foot a little bit more and the other to start to strengthen and stretch into those hamstrings. Maybe you want to rub the back of those hamstrings, getting in a little bit more. If you're looking um, for some more, let's start to get more into those hip flexors. So start to release the hands off to the side here. You can use the hands to press in towards the floor if you need that extra little bit of stabilizing, or you can really pull that core in either floating the hands or just resting the hands um, to start to feel that there. So those are our different levels. Let's start to get into those hip flexors a little more. So even if you're just holding on to the legs or just to the sides of the knees or starting to take a little bit um, so that the core has to be working a little bit more here, start to imagine yourself tiptoeing on the ceiling. And so you're warming up into those hip flexors. You're really pulling that spine down towards the floor, engaging nice and strong and remembering to breathe. So if you find yourself holding your breath here, 
remember to have nice big inhales and exhales if you're able to. All right, starting to feel maybe a little bit of warmth. Keep tiptoeing on the ceiling. Keep remembering to extend long through that spine. Feel those hip flexors warming up. <sighs> Couple nice breaths here. If you need to do this even with your knees bent, um, you can just be as productive. Uh, by bringing the knees and giving them a little wiggle. You're still working into those hip flexors. And if you want more for the last five seconds here, you can take big giant steps. The more you bring in the feet down, the more of that lower core you'll be using. So doing one leg at a time, lowering it down, bringing it back up. <sighs> All right, let's bend the knees, hug the knees in towards the chest. Uh, take a little bit of a moment to, of a break, release, let go. All right, let's bring the knees hovering over the hips. The feet can be relaxed for the most easy variation or even touching down onto the toes um, for even easier. So what we're working on here, so relaxed or even at that nice 90 degrees, pull that spine in towards the floor. Take a moment to really set, maybe take that quick exhale breath up to pull everything in. Excellent. Bring the hands to a nice prayer position. Reach the hands up nice and tall. And then using that exhale to engage through the core, inhale, reach out, reach to one side of the knees. Bring the shoulders gently off the ground, lower back down and over towards the other side. And we're gonna do a number of these. And so if you need to bring those feet down, try just bringing them to tiptoe and try to really squeeze the body as you go across. And if you want that more intensity, you're really trying to bring those knees, maybe even touching towards the shoulder, more to the elbow, and getting that little bit of a swing in, or you can extend the legs long. <sighs> Bringing the feet up towards the ceiling to pour, pull more into that lower core, lower abdominals. So take a moment to check in here. How are you feeling? How is your back doing? Do you need to take a moment to pause, pull everything back in? Or do you need to just keep going, working through this, going to one side and the other, getting into those obliques, getting into those upper abdominals? Excellent. It's nice to work the core. I like to do it right at the beginning. Um, for a number of gut health reasons. And it also kind of gets it out of the way, doing it at the end of the practice when you're ready for your cool down. Feels cruel to throw some core in there. And then I always throw it in somewhere in the middle of practice as well. All right, let's keep going for five, four, three, two, and one. Taking one last one, reach the hands overhead, plant the feet, and then windshield wiper the knees from side to side, just dropping them gently down from one side to the next. Excellent. All right, just checking my list, making sure I'm not forgetting anything here. I've got one more little exercise for us here. So you can do this tucking the hands underneath the sits bones. If you're really struggling to keep that low back pressing and that little bit of height will just help force um, that low back in towards the mat. Bring the knees back stacked up over the hips. And then we're just gonna take some toe taps. So we're extending um, one leg and then the other, either touching the heel down or you can touch really close into the sits bones for extra easy. The farther away you bring the, the heels, the more challenging, the more gravity um, your legs are producing more weight for that core to bring back. If you don't believe me, put your hands on your core so that you can feel into it. Maybe one hand low, one hand high, and then just do little baby motions. You'll feel just that little core and then start to bring your legs farther, you'll be able to feel that higher up on your abdominals. And so there you go. A little bit of yoga science for you. All right, let's keep going. A couple more here. Keep breathing. Keep pulling that belly button in towards the spine. 
Excellent. Let's stop. Drop the feet. You can either windshield wiper to release or hug the knees into the chest. Whatever you prefer. It is technically your cool down time. All right, let's all hug the knees in towards the chest or reach through the knees for the feet and coming into that ever so nice happy baby, pulling the spine back in towards the mat. Maybe you rock from side to side. Maybe you extend one leg long and the other or crisscross through the legs. Whatever your body loves here. All right, let's roll ourselves up into a nice seated position. And sitting up nice and tall and strong. Excellent. I'm just noticing that Facebook has decided to stop yet again. So let me just hit the reload button. One day, one day we'll get this. Maybe I need to order a little internet booster, but it seems these classes are free. Ah, sometimes you get what you pay for. <laughs> just kidding. My goal is to provide high quality at all times. And sometimes it just refuses to work. So coming into that nice seated position. If you have always stop, um, stacked ankle over ankle, try mixing it up a little bit and bringing boop, boop, ankle in front, one in front of the other. That might create a little bit more openness and sitting on a block um, might really help. Just lift those hips up, adds a little bit more openness to the hips or even sitting on a chair, if sitting on the floor is not your jam and sitting crisscross absolutely is not gonna happen for you. By all means, jump on the couch, grab a kitchen chair, even grab a stool. We can do almost all of these exercises just sitting that way. So, all right, Facebook is saying camera issues. I don't believe you. Well, it's no, lettering, no longer letting me use a stream key. So we'll just record this video and then post it afterwards, which is great because then I can just go along, do my jam, and then you can enjoy afterwards. Sorry, it's not live live for y'all. Um, I wish that was working this evening, but I refuse to play around with it and I refuse to give up. So here we go. Let's continue on with our class here. We got some time. We got to get moving. So let's inhale, reach those arms up and start center. Connecting this with the breath. So with the inhale, sweep the arms up and the exhales, connect the hands, pull the hands down that Im imaginary line, <sighs> relax it down. So this is warming up through the shoulders. Then if you start to look up when you reach up and take a nice little bow when you pull down, then you'll be warming up into the spine as well. It's kind of like a seated cat. Cow is a great way <sighs> to feel into the body. All right, let's come to center. <sighs> Sit nice and tall and strong. And then let's come into just a gentle twist. So reaching for your opposite knee. So even if you're sitting in a chair, it's still opposite knee and can either go back behind you. Um, if you're sitting on the ground, pressing into the floor, inhale, get a little bit taller. Exhale, twist a little deeper. So maybe you're just reaching for that back of the chair or wherever you can that helps you get the twist you want. You can even do this with your back arm floating up. There's nothing saying that your arms have to be touching down here. It just helps you root in to twist a little deeper. All right, let's exhale, come back to the other side, reach for the other knee. Inhale, get nice and tall. Exhale, twist a little deeper. Connect in with that breath. Excellent. All right, let's untwist and come on back and let's switch the feet. So bringing the opposite in foot in front or on top if you're still sitting that way. And if you're sitting legs extended, then ignoring that and still sitting with your legs extended. All right, roll shoulders back and down. Take a couple of nice just shoulder rolls. This is my fourth workout of the day. So my shoulders are starting to feel it. All right, let's alternate. Like you're swimming. All right, let's find some stillness. Let's add some more into the shoulders. So bring your hand out front, reaching it across the body. You can simply just reach, maybe reaching for the shoulder if that's enough stretch here. Or if you want some more, you can start um, to, with your opposite hand, pull into that shoulder. Arm can be flopping down 
or reaching back behind you, whatever you'd like. Just starting to feel the stretch through the shoulder. Connecting in, softening, maybe remembering that intention. All right, let's exhale, come into the other side and either just simply hugging on to the opposite shoulder and feeling the pull there or starting to pull more into it. Keep rolling that shoulder back. Um, one thing that's really fun about holding yoga poses or postures um, for a little bit, like you can do this with some movement as well. I'm starting to pull into the arm if you're really against um, passive stretching. I know there's some debate about that in the community, but I think that as you hold it, it just does something with your brain. There's something that feels so good about holding that stretch and then feeling it deepen as you start to let go. Um, it just goes deeper into the muscles. And part of that is building trust with your muscles. So as you're holding it, your brain is in that natural like panic state of like, oh my gosh, okay, yeah, I'm ready to move to the next thing. I'm not gonna let it go too deep. But if you hold it and as you breathe, your brain's like, oh, okay, I'm safe here. I can go a little deeper. And that's where things like restorative yoga or yin yoga um, can feel so super beneficial. Um, it, they are, they can be really deep practices um, because you're getting into that deeper stretch and it's not always easy. They're not always beginner um, poses or activities that you can be doing, especially in more of a yin style class. All right, let's release. Inhale, reach those arms up. Hands to heart center. Excellent. And just a couple more. Um, yeah, so holding on to that will start to build that trust. And so that's why I prefer the longer holds. It also lets you adjust through the body. Um, so if you can't jump into a pose immediately, um, not, not an issue. I will give you time to deepen. All right, let's work our way onto all four. So coming into a nice tabletop position, bringing knees and hips in line, hands and shoulders in line. Um, have a nice tuck of the chin. Start to feel that length through the body. So you can extend the head a little more and push through the tailbone. Engage through the core belly button towards the spine. Almost like you got punched in the gut. Ugh. Excellent. Pressing that lower back out nice and strong. And then coming into our tiger. So send right toes back. You can take a moment to touch them down. Square the hips. Get a little calf stretch if you want. Walk those left fingertips forward, maybe keeping them tented as you press into right hand, the left knee, engaging. And then if you want more, start to float the foot up, float the hand up, thumb comes up, reaching hands forward, feel that traction, maybe bring the foot a little bit higher, maybe reach the hand a little more. So kicking through the heel, excellent. Keep holding here, nice and strong. And let's come for three little crunches. So elbow towards knee, reach it out. And another. Last one. Reach out and hold nice and strong. So simply holding here. And if you want, if that's too hard, and coming down to fingertips and toes. Or if you want more, start to sweep that arm up and around. Bend through the knee, trying to grab onto the foot or grabbing a strap, squaring the shoulders back towards the front, then kicking in, lifting the foot, extending through the hand, pressing into that right hand making sure you're not pinching anywhere through the neck. So maybe keeping the chin slightly down, maybe send the leg a little higher. Excellent, without sling, shutting at the foot, start to release, come back to that nice extended tiger, touch the hand down, drop the knee, and take a little sway from side to side, pushing the hip out one direction and the next. All right, let's come back to neutral, get ready for that other side. So press firm into those hands. Left foot back, right hand forward, touch them down, engage through that core, find that strength, extend long through the head, and then on that exhale, start to float foot up and hand up, or maybe even just one if you want to play around with it. If you're somewhere in between here and here, and you don't know where to go, you can just do one, you can just do the other. All right, let's take three little crunches, elbow towards knee, reach it out. Elbow to knee, reach out nice and long, kick that leg high, elbow to knee, reach out and hold. 
So either simply holding here, keep that core nice and strong, or start to sweep the hand around, bend through the knee, reaching for the toes and kicking into it. And so starting to lift the leg, squaring those shoulders back towards the front of the mat. <sighs> Maybe you lift the leg a little higher, pulling into the foot, kicking into the hand. <sighs> All right, without slingshotting, start to release, come back to that tiger. Drop the hand, drop the knee, and take your nice little sway. All right, come back towards neutral. Take an inhale breath, start to look up, drop the belly down, feel the nice back bend, press into the shoulders. Exhale, tuck the chin round through the spine. Press that back up as high as you can. And so moving through and just a couple of these, warming the spine and the shoulders up, remembering to press into those hands when you feel like you're at your max on either side. I guess ultimately you don't have to, but that really engages and adds that extra little millimeter into it. All right, let's come to neutral, bring those knees nice and wide, sit back on those heels, reach the hands forward. But if you can't sit back on your heels, there's always puppy pose, which is still hips over knees. Reach the hands heart forward, melt the heart down. Always a great option. Or you can start to walk it back for that child's pose. <sighs> Take a couple nice big breaths here. Excellent. Feeling the heartbeat, becoming aware of the breath. How are you feeling? Check in with yourself. And what do you need from this exact moment? And do you need a little word of encouragement for yourself? You got this, we can do this. Mm. Take in one more breath. Sort of press into those hands. Bring the knees back to neutral and make your way into a downward dog. So you're tucking those toes under, pressing into the hands to lift the legs up off the ground. Hips go nice and high into the sky. And taking a moment to maybe adjust through the feet, maybe coming a little wider, maybe a little closer or farther apart. Pedaling into the feet, getting that nice calf stretch. Pressing into the hands, maybe rotating into plank. And pushing back, feel that stretch. Let's look towards the front of the mat and maybe take a couple of steps, maybe a big step, maybe a nice hop into a forward fold. So taking a moment here, if those hamstrings are really tight, they're screaming at you, bring a bend to the knees. There's also no expectation uh, that you touch your toes or touch the mat or the ground. Um, your hands can be on your legs or just dangling down wherever they might be. All right, let's inhale, halfway lift. And take a moment here if you're feeling dizzy or feeling that head being rushed from the child's pose to downward dog to the forward fold. We'll let the, the blood start to make its way back. All right, roll shoulders back and down. Bend through the knees, sink the hips, reach the arms up, sweep up. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, reach up. And sink into this nice chair posture. Nice and strong. Imagine you have a band around your knees that you're pressing the legs out to. And so you're nice and strong through the outer line of the legs. Maybe you sink the hips a little more. Maybe if you want, you bring the hands together and drop them down the back. So really lifting the elbows up. One full breath. Reach on up, come back up to our nice mountain pose. You can take a little back bend if you want, sending the hips forward, reaching back, or just gazing back, hands to heart center. Roll shoulders back and down. Excellent, release. Let's step the right foot back, coming into our warrior two. And so that foot is, toes are pointing towards the long edge of the mat, bending through the front knee. Stance is closer together for more ease or wider apart for more challenge. But if you're standing really close with your foot together and you're looking maybe something like this with the knee super far forward, maybe you're even bending forward or whatnot, this is a good sign 
this little hip setup, and that you can step farther back. So being brave and courageous, adjust the feet, maybe going into that wider stance, and then bend through the knee, pressing into the feet, nice and strong. One full breath, inhale. Exhale, roll the shoulders back and down. So it's almost like your head and your arms are just floating through the air and then you're strong through the legs, pushing into the feet. The hips are nice and engaged, slight tuck of the pelvis. And so if that tailbone is sticking out, bring it underneath, engaging it through that pelvic floor. The yogic term is Mula Bandha. Uliana Bandha is engaged the belly button and maybe even throat is engaged. All right, let's start to straighten through that front leg. Also, if I'm holding a pose for too long or warrior two specifically, you can always start to straighten through the front leg at any point to come out and give your body a bit of a rest. So taking a moment to do that, straighten through the leg, kick that hip out towards the right. It's that little like boop. I feel like you have to make the sound to do it. Reach left hand forward, and then start to drop the hand down reach right hand up. So what I want to work on today, specifically in this pose, is trying to get shoulder stacked over shoulder. And so coming into more of that. So it's not about reaching down. I'm trying to keep that exact same warrior two position. I'm just bending, I'm sliding things down, that imaginary wall, I'm not letting this hand just let go. I'm keeping that strength as I tip over and reach up, reach down. Find the length, press into the feet, open up through those right ribs. <sighs> Excellent, to come out of this nice and safe, let's bring a bend into that knee, reach on up, back to that nice warrior two, sink through that leg. Try to keep the legs exactly as they are now. So flip left hand facing up and start to sweep it on back. So oftentimes you'll straighten through the legs as you reach back. See if you can sink back into that nice warrior two stance and reach left arm up. You can place the hand on the hip. You can track it down the leg. You can tuck it behind the back. Whatever you feel you need. Working through that, you stay strong through the legs. Keep pressing in. Keep trying to spin left hip open. So lifting of the heart up towards the ceiling. Beautiful. Let's float on back to that warrior two. Nice and strong. Excellent. So let's try that again. So let's come into our nice warrior two. Sink it deep. Take a one full round of breath here. Breathe in. Let it go. Let's straighten through the leg and kick the hip out. And then work on keeping those arms exactly as they are as you tip over. Reach on up, reach down nice and strong through those legs. One full breath, extend long through the crown of the head. <sighs> Bend through the knee, sweep on back, warrior two. Flipping front palm up. One full breath, set and lock the legs. Tip it back, and coming into that nice reverse warrior or exalted warrior. Lift through the heart, so lift the heart up. Roll left hip back ever so slightly. Pressing firm into the legs. <sighs> Come on back, warrior two. All right, one more time. I'm slowly splitting apart here. So adjust the feet as you might need to. All right, warrior two. Nice and strong, one full breath. <sighs> Straighten through the leg. Kick the hip out, reach forward, and slide the arms down that imaginary wall. Keep rolling, top shoulder open. <sighs> maybe start to track that hand a little bit farther down the leg. As we've been here before, maybe you're building that trust with the muscles. <sighs> Bring a bend to that front knee. Start to come up. Warrior two, look forward. Light through the arms. Strong through the legs. All right, front hand flips and tip things back. And coming into our exalted warrior. Excellent. Let's meet back, warrior two. Nice and strong. Straighten through the leg and hop towards the front of the mat. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. 
So options here, the most gentle option is to hang out in a forward fold. You can play around um, with bending of the knees, swaying the arms, anything you can really think of here. Uh, the next option is to hold the downward dog. So let's all make our way there. Who wants to journey there? Inhale, halfway lift, flatten through the back, and then bend the knees, plant the hands. Maybe you take a nice step into that downward dog. So you can hang out here in the down dog with my dog. You can drop the knees into a child's pose if you want. That's also another option. Or we can take a little flow. And so we're coming to a plank position. You can drop the knees down. You can lower down, letting the elbows graze the ribs. And then come into your back bend. So press into the hands. Keep the elbows tucked in. Lift up. So maybe you just want your baby cobra to roll the shoulders away from the ears. Maybe you want to press into those hands a little bit more. And then tuck the toes under. Maybe coming back through tabletop. Press in, lift the hips, meeting back and downward dog. So if you're in a child's pose, meet back and downward dog. <sighs> Let's look towards the front of the mat. Take a nice big step, hop or jump into a forward fold. So now we've all met back in a forward fold position. Connect in with the breath. <sighs> Let's inhale, halfway lift. Take a moment here. If you are getting dizzy, as you, if you're coming up too fast, take a second here. Extend through the crown of the head. And let's bend the knees, sink the hips, sweep up into that chair, all the way to standing, reach up. And the hands start center. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, sink back into that nice chair position. Pressing firm into the outer lines of the legs. All oh, that ruckus is my husband coming home. He's home early, so hello, welcome. So while my dog is also excited. She heard the garage door. All right, let's sink a little deeper and press all the way up to standing. Reach on up, hands to heart. All right, we've got all of that on the other side to do. So let's step left foot back, coming into warrior two. That's why my back isn't facing you the entire time here. I'm just gonna switch here, something like that. Excellent. All right. Reach out nice and long. Coming into that warrior two. So workshop this a little bit. Adjust the feet as you need to. This side might be different. We're trying, so I'm just gonna put my hands on my hips. So you see here, so my hips are really pointing kind of in this direction. So I'm trying to spin right hip open so that I can lengthen through my shoulder having that alignment here. And so I naturally would want to have my arms here for where my hips are at. So I'm just trying to find that openness, pressing into the feet. But I want to keep this knee over top of the ankle. That is way more important. And so if your hips don't allow you to open so that your shoulders can be perfectly aligned to the long edge of your mat, that's okay. That's not the goal here. The goal isn't just to be collapsing inward, but not only finding openness in our shoulders, finding openness in our hips. So spinning right knee, keeping it over the ankle and imagining just a nice little string pulling up, opening up. All right, press firm into those feet. Most beautiful. All right, let's come straighten through the front leg and give that leg a like, nice little bit of a break and kick the hip out, reach forward and slide those arms. So keeping them exactly the same reaching up, reaching down, and coming into your preferred depth of this pose, of the position. Nice, strong triangle. <sighs> keep breathing, keep extending long through the crown of the head, bend through the knee, reach on back up. Take a breath in this warrior two, flip front palm, reaching up, and then lock through the legs, reach up into our exalted warrior or a reverse warrior. So either hand is on the hip, I'm tracking down the leg or tucking behind the back. That'll use a little bit more core and sink into those legs. Reach up. <sighs> Let's come on back. Warrior two, nice and strong. Keep holding here. All right, let's get ready to go into our triangle again. Straighten through the front leg, kick the hip out, 
and start to slide things down. So even if you come to here, that's your max. And that's cool. You can simply hold that. You don't have to even touch down onto the leg. I'm just trying to see what that would look like and higher up. Yeah, it's really more so about keeping those arms than having that nice tip, nice little side bend and through the body. Lift that top arm up, open up through the shoulder, lift through the heart. <sighs> nice and strong through those feet, keep pressing. Bend through that knee, come out nice and safe. And come on up, warrior two. One full breath here, so don't, don't skip out on that. <sighs> Flip the palm up, reach up, exalted warrior. <sighs> Bend into that front knee, find that strength. And let's come on back, warrior two, looking forward. <sighs> Straighten through the leg. Last time in our triangle pose here, and kick the hip out, reach down, reach up. And taking your time to adjust, and pressing firm into those feet. <sighs> All right, bend through the knee. Come on up, warrior two. Nice, full breath, flip that front palm and try something different. If you've been doing your exalted warrior the same every time, mix up that arm placement. Maybe you want to bend into the elbow, reaching up through the elbow. If you have the hand coming behind the back, maybe you want to even reach for fingertips, getting more into that shoulder. Feel the stretch going all the way from this hip, opening up through the arm. All right, let's come on back. Reach it out. Press firm. And then step towards the top of your mat. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. And so we've got our flow options here again. Same as last time. Just hanging out in forward fold or making your way back to down dog or child's pose or doing a full flow. So let's inhale, halfway lift if you're going to down dog. Exhale, plant the hands, step back, maybe meeting in down log, and then take your flow, however you want it. Excellent. If you want a second, third, or fourth flow, by all means, I'm not going to stop you. Making this as much cardio or as gentle as you'd like. I'm enjoying just holding a downward dog here. And so if you want to flow it out again, that's totally an option. <sighs> all right, let's all come to down dog if you're in child's pose. Finish up your flow. Let's look towards the front of the mat. Maybe take a couple of tiny baby steps, walking into a forward fold. <sighs> Inhale, halfway lift, roll shoulders down. Bend through the knees, sink the hips, and reach up through your chair pose all the way to standing. Hands to heart center. <sighs> Inhale, sweep up. Exhale, hands to heart center. So from here, press into those hands, roll shoulders back and down, bend through the knees, sink into those hips. Meeting in that chair pose, strong through the legs, and then let's twist towards the left. So keeping an eye on those knees, keep pulling right hip back. Maybe you simply just add a bit of a twist. Maybe you can bend down, hook that elbow on the right knee or even the left knee. Press firm into those hands if you've got the elbow hooked. I'm trying to bring the hands to heart center. All right, nice and strong here. Let's see if we can press firm into that left foot, right toes. Or right heel comes up so you're pressing just into the foot if your elbow is hooked on that knee you're gonna have to just release it ever so slightly as we press firm maybe hold right foot up and step it back coming into our twisted high lunge so taking a moment here roll left hip back right hip forward press into those hands so even if you're higher up here and still twisted high lunge all right let's untwist Reach the hands up. Coming into what is currently my favorite little sequence, 
And so we're gonna make our way to standing and we're gonna try to keep this back leg up the entire time. So you can release the hands down however you might need to and start to straighten our power into that back leg and then bring the shoulders maybe over the foot as you step it up, holding onto the knee, underneath the knee, even reaching down onto the foot. Stand nice and tall, roll the shoulder blades back and down. <sighs> Find that jersey point, a, po a point to focus in on, helps you with your balance, and then see if you can start to extend that right leg. <sighs> Holding here for a couple of breaths, adjusting through it. <sighs> Bend through the knee. Start to release the foot, but start to fly it all the way back into a warrior three. Keep rolling right hip down. Extend long through that crown of the head. Arms can be back behind you. Petting a puppy dog and flying forward. Out at a T. All kinds of options here. Keep rolling right hip down. Extend through that heel. All right, let's float on up. Come all the way up, bring the knee with you. And then hands maybe underneath the knee. Or for more challenge, release the leg completely, kick it forward. Accent, bring a bend and drop it down. Take a little moment and pedal it out. All right, let's sneak a little flow in here before we do the other side. And start center, fold it down. Inhale lift, of course, always the options to not flow. Why do you call this a flow class? I think I might as well get a couple in. I'm going to take two. Excellent. Lowering down. Nice back bend. Oh, feels so good. All right, meeting back in a nice downward dog. Maybe take one giant step towards that front of the mat. Or a nice gentle hop or float, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Use that halfway lift as you need it. Roll shoulders back and down, bend the knees, sink the hips, press on up, reach up, and start center. All right, let's come in to our chair pose. So hands at heart, press in, roll shoulders back and down. Start pressing into the feet. Bend the knees, sink those hips. Try to bring the belly button in so that rounding through the low back. Send it out. Let's twist this time towards the right. Keep an eye on the knees. Try to keep drawing left hip back. Excellent. So starting to float that left heel up, pressing firm into that right foot. See if you can get that left foot off the ground. Let's step it back completely and coming into our twisted high lunge. So either hooking the elbow. So if you're here and your hands are aligned with the shoulder, the motion I'm talking about is pressing into the hands, rolling that top shoulder open, trying to get the hands more aligned with that sternum. So even if you're coming up, keep the hands at the center of the chest and twist. All right, let's untwist it. Reach on up for this nice high lunge. And then release the hands down. Beautiful. Let's step all the way up. Pressing firm into that right side. Find that jersey point. Maybe holding on to underneath the knee, the top of the knee. Maybe even reach down, grab the foot or the heel. Find that nice posture. So pressing firm into that right foot, right hip. Hips are a little bit squared. You're not tipping over towards one side. And then extend through the leg. <sighs> Holding here. Still strong in that leg. Roll shoulders back and down. Extend through that crown of the head. Excellent. One more full breath. Bend through the knee. Release. Let's fly this right back into our warrior three. Now rolling left hip down. Hmm. Finding that length through the crown of the head. Try to point those left toes down, extend through the heel. Maybe the foot comes up a little more. 
All right, let's come all the way back up to standing. Grabbing on to that knee. We're going for the extra challenge of extending the leg without holding on. Excellent, bend the knee, plant the foot. And let's get another flow in or just hanging out wherever you'd like along the way, listening to your body or going for that challenge. Beautiful. I'm going to take another flow here. So I'm still dropping my knees, but I'm trying to go for that chaturanga. So I'm lowering down, but I'm kind of resting on my elbows. And my tummy is not touching down to the ground, although it might look like it. And then I'm pressing up, doing that nice little yogi push up, and then sinking into my back bend. All right, tuck those toes under. <sighs> Downward dog. So if you're in your forward fold, we're going to make our way down onto our front. And so if you want to step back, planting the hands, stepping back, maybe into plank, you can drop the knees. And then let's lower down. <sighs> Bring the hands underneath the shoulders. And take a nice little cobra. Roll shoulders back and down. Just a little baby cobra. Maybe you want floating cobra. Feet and hands come off using those back muscles. Excellent. All right. Bring the elbows underneath the shoulders. Reach the hands forward nice and wide. Coming into our sphinx pose. So feel that pelvis pressing in towards the mat. If that low back is tight, widen through the legs. And if it's not tight, you can always try to bring toes to touch. And just feel how that movement of the feet and the legs plays around with the hips and the low back. How fascinating, how much feet and the position of them can play into our entire posture. But before I go on a foot tangent, let's get back to yoga here. So in our plank, let's take a moment here to maybe deepen this. And so taking your right hand and maybe bringing it underneath that shoulder, coming into a twist. And so I'm not pushing into that hand. I'm just trying to roll that shoulder back and open slightly. And if you want more, you can bend through the knee and then reach for the foot, getting into the quad and twisting it out. All right, without slingshotting the foot, if you've got it, release, bring the hand back and take a moment here and then getting ready to come into that twist on the other side. So left hand coming maybe just underneath the shoulder, start to twist, look back towards the feet. And if you're feeling able to reach on to that foot, go ahead. Maybe you pull the ankle or the heel in towards that sits bone or to the outside of the hip. Feeling that stretch through the quad. Can you relax and soften? How is that low back doing? Making sure there's no pinching. Keep finding length through that crown of the head. Let's release the foot without slingshotting. And come on back and lower down. So if you have a favorite cheek you'd rather rest on, totally an option. Or stacking hands, resting the forehead. <sighs> Excellent. All right, let's press into those hands, having them come underneath the shoulders and push back into a child's pose. Maybe you want knees together, to release more through the spine. Maybe you want those knees nice and wide, getting more into the hips. Yeah, feeling wherever you need to. Maybe you want to tuck the hands back behind. This stretches a little more through the shoulders, which I desperately need today. <sighs> Starting to feel the breath. Becoming aware of that body. <sighs> All right. Let's start to make our way down into a nice reclined position. So spinning around, dropping down, then rolling back, hugging those knees and towards the chest and taking just a quick little moment. Maybe to rock from side to side. Excellent. All right, we're gonna come into a reclined twist here. So reclined, laying down, twist, 
really whatever twist you'd like to. I'm loving just the basic twist right now. So bringing the arms out wide like a T, reaching out, bring the knees over the hips and simply just drop them down to whatever side you'd like. If the knees don't come all the way down, that's fine. Totally can work with that maybe by grabbing a block, a pillow, a couch cushion, some blankets and padding up underneath that knee. Or you bring the knee all the way down and if that shoulder starts to roll off, just bring the back hand closer towards the body or even resting it onto that hip. Coming just slightly more into that fetal position, try to keep rolling that opposite shoulder towards the ground to get more into that twist. So the twist is really knees or legs go one way, shoulders and arms go the opposite way, trying to press down. And if you're in just this more um, basic twist of just the knees down and you're like, man, I really want some more, you can bring that hand on top of the knees and you can start to extend the legs long and you can reach for your toe, top toe and extend it and getting deeper into that twist, trying to really keep um, that opposite shoulder glued down onto the mat, or maybe even gaze goes opposite direction, including the neck into the nice twist. <sighs> All right, so in whatever version you're in, let's start to release. So releasing either the toes or the knees, bringing a bend back, swing the legs all the way up, reset and drop the legs over towards the opposite side. <sighs> Maybe gaze goes in opposite direction. Maybe you start to extend the legs. Maybe you grab on for the toe, go for the bind, try not to kick the window. So starting to make your way out of your twist, returning the neck to neutral, releasing the knees or the feet, whatever you might have, start to swing the knees back up. You can plant them down and then let's finish off the class by either hugging the knees in towards the chest or reach on through for that nice half baby, sending the feet up towards the ceiling, um, bringing the knees in towards the underarms and playing around here. I really like this pose to finish a class because um, it kind of combines two things at once. You have your feet extended in the air and so the blood is draining in towards the body and there's something so satisfying about that even just like that waterfall or that legs up the wall position same just gentle version of it and then you also ah, you get to press that spine in towards the mat or the floor resetting through the spine there so as we finish off here feel free to take some movement you would love to explore with um listening into your body like what do you actually need right now Maybe you want a bridge posture, lifting the hips up off the ground. Maybe you want a shoulder stand or even a plow position. Maybe you want cobbler where you bring the soles of the feet to touch, let the knees come open. Or if you want the reverse of that, there's teepee, which plants the feet, walks the feet nice and wide, lets the knees fall inward. Slight tuck of the chin. Hmm, playing around with whatever movement you want here. And so if you're doing something on one side, ah, take a couple of moments, balance it out on the other side. <sighs> and start to connect in with that breath. And can you feel the journey of the inhale? Maybe breathing in through the nose. Can you feel the lungs? Do you feel your lungs from top to bottom or bottom to top? what feels more natural for you. And just bringing that awareness all the way through the body. And I won't do a guided final meditation. I will just leave you this evening um, to cultivate your own time and peace. And then if there's still chaos happening around you, just simply see if you could take 20 full complete inhales and 20 full complete exhales. Breathing in, staying present on your mat, not letting the distractions exist, but finding that peace and trying to harness that within your own practice and bring that with you for the rest of the evening or for the rest of your day, whatever lies ahead. So I genuinely thank you for joining in tonight or re-watching. Um, it's always an honor to be able to do yoga and to share yoga. 
I hope you have just a wonderful rest of your day or evening. May it be filled with joy and may you always be blessed. Thank you so much. Namaste.